four. Wow. This is uh, uh, the wrong date on this slide. Wow, I forgot to fix that. So this is 2024, information and support for traders and investors. Uh, this is going to be a great show. I know you're absolutely going to love this. So uh, don't get confused by that date. Um, I am actually a year older. So here we go. Uh, in, on Market Week Live, we have to bring you these disclaimers, of course, and it says that all of the information we show on AskSlim.com is for entertainment and educational purposes only and is not to be construed as investment or trading advice. The sole purpose of this website, any oral or written presentation made in any way referring or relating to this website is pro to provide information which possibly could be used by a person or entity in discussions with their investment advisors and or investment decision makers. It does not function as a substitute for the advice of an investment advisor. Consult your own trading plan, of course, or financial professionals before making any investment decisions. And please refer to our terms and disclaimers if you need them on askslim.com at the website. Our hosts for today, we have our full amazing analytical team, uh, and you can get information about us uh, by going to AskSlim.com, meet the team, and you'll see the interviews that uh, each of us have done. Uh, I've been in it for almost 50 years. May 20th will be my 50-year anniversary as a trader when I became a member of the CBOE. Matt and Arby have been with me for seemingly decades, and Katie our newest addition to this great team just does a fantastic job. So we have all four of us here right now. If you need to contact us, if you have membership issues or issues with the website, write to team at AskSlim.com. Questions on our content, uh, info on our education or analysis, and for our first-time specials and upgrades, you can write to Matt at AskSlim.com. All right, if you're uh, brand new, get acquainted with us. Uh, go to the front page of AskSlim.com and click on Snapshot Light, especially if you're interested in the stock market because you'll be getting information and our analysis every single day on the S&P 500. On YouTube, do subscribe to our channel because you'll want to get notifications and you can get those by clicking the notification bell every time we put up a video. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and on X, follow us at Ask Slim. Uh, any questions on anything that we present in here, write to Matt and he's going to help you with that. All right, coming up in this show, I'm going to bring you my opening comments on the markets. We're going to have our great section of trade planning uh, with the Ask Slim team. And we're each going to show you analysis that we liked for this this week or these coming weeks uh, and show you uh, what our total approach is to trade planning. Matt's going to review our services, and you'll see the amazing depth of our content and services. We'll have our express round, a Q&A, where all four of us will answer your questions. This is from the level one to four members who have been invited in here uh, into our broadcast uh, to be able to ask those questions. So if you're not, if you're watching it on YouTube, not a member, become a level one to four member if you want to participate in this. And then you'll be in on questions for trade planning, chart analysis, trading issues. The floor will be yours. And then I'm going to bring you stock market analysis. We'll take a deep dive into the S&P 500, and I'm going to look at VIX. And I'm going to show you a chart that nobody ever brings because I made it up, but you're going to love it. So uh, I think uh, you're going to be happy also to see a market condition monitor, which uh, if I show you how that works, well, you're going to say, wow, how do I get that? Well, we'll tell you, of course. All right. So, uh, you know, want to know uh, how to watch the show. If you are not uh, a member at Ask Slim, well, premium members will send a link to participate and uh, can be in that Q&A. If you're a free or non-member or watching it on YouTube or anywhere else, else uh, you're watching it on the Ask Slim team channel. And uh, please do become a premium member to uh, be a participant. Here is my opening commentary on the markets. The stock market actually regained its footing this week. Uh, that was after a weak start to the year. Um, the week could have really started out a lot worse. So Boeing was down 8% on Monday, and that really did hurt the Dow as um, bolts came loose from a window and it pulled off a, a door panel, and it was at 16,000 feet. And 
that was a horrible thing and unbelievably dangerous. And luckily, nobody got hurt, uh, hurt or died on that. Uh, and then that plane landed safely. But then Boeing, uh, uh, the planes got grounded. And now they found other loose bolts. And now we don't know when the FAA is going to allow them back in the air. So Boeing had a really rough week. Uh, and at the same time, uh, on Monday, Saudis cut oil prices and oil fell very sharply, uh, like $3 on the day. And the energy stocks moved down. So all of that was kind of weighing Monday morning on the market. But buyers came back and they moved the market back up and it actually they never stopped down uh early in the morning pre-opening and then moved, finishing up 366 points on the day 344 points on the day for the nasdaq sorry and 66 points for the s p 500 in what was a tech revival Tuesday and Wednesday, the market was chopping around and moving higher, more quietly, though, waiting for the CPI and PPI to come out. Uh, Thursday, the CPI did come out, and it was hotter than estimated, and stocks and bonds moved down on that news, but then recovered. Buyers are clearly still here in the market. Friday, the market was weak early as bank earnings were not good. They were moving down, and some warnings there as uh, they have had to rebuild their reserves. And uh, the, it was reported that the U.S. Uh, deficit was 52% larger than last year. Yes, we have a very, very um, good government there that is being very careful that we don't have further inflationary periods coming up. Of course, you know, I'm being sarcastic, and I'm always that way uh, when it comes to talking about uh, how the government spends too much money and how the Federal Reserve allows that to happen. Uh, and uh, that only can mean that there are bigger problems coming further out there. Friday, though, the PPI was weaker uh, than expected. The headline number down a tenth, year over year, only up 1.8%. That means they could celebrate. Here we are again, their 2% target. Here we go. And uh, of course, it is uh, uh, a possibility that it will go all the way to deflation or that it will bounce all the way back up to big numbers. So there's there should be no celebration to have uh, inflation right here when we're all still paying for the you know 14% additional inflation we had the last three years. We, that didn't go away, did it? We're still paying for that. Uh, the core number uh, actually was unchanged for three months in a row. So I don't really think they should be declaring victory here. Uh, but the uh, markets are acting like they really expect that there will be rate cuts starting in March. In fact, they're now pricing in about 76% that that will happen. Uh, and the indexes, which were down, recovered. Uh, and uh, right now, they've been waffling on both sides of the unchanged area down a little bit in the market here uh, on Friday. But gold and silver, they really popped in a very big way uh, as uh, the uh, 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 the interest rates come down. And that like, like means that uh, the dollar will come down and it takes less dollars to buy the metals. And so the metal price goes up. I mean, it's pretty easy. Plus, if rates come down, inflation is going to pop again. I'm going to promise you that. And uh, so that's why the gold and silver market got a pop. And we've been super bullish in there. And I don't think it's quite the time uh, right now. So uh, the stock market, well, our analysis showed the market would decline into mid-January. At least that was the highest probability. And we thought that we'd see the S&P 500 have a pretty mild pullback of 140 to 240 points into that time frame. It was very clear that that low came earlier. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, for those of you that are level two, three, and four members, RV did a just a great uh, piece on the stock sectors, which showed that a lot of them were bottoming earlier. And that was a great guide uh, for, especially for me. I look at RV's work and I learn from it, and, uh, everybody, from everybody on our team. And I know we all look at each other's work. So RV was a guide for me on that. And I could see that there was an earlier upturn coming in the stock market. And that's reflected in our charts and I'm going to show you that uh, in a little while. Uh, intermediate term uh, to long term, our analysis has not changed at all. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what actually would change it uh, when we get into those charts a little later on.
Um, a, a good way uh, to describe uh, what I think is going to happen would be really thinking about a compression. I, I think that we're in a period right now where our momentum conditions are positive. Our technicals are showing things that are positive. And the market is showing that there's a resilience as it comes down and it keeps going back up. However, as I showed in the uh, year end show, our special we did, there's a lot of resistance on, up above. And we're also looking at historic valuations. So you have upward pressure from the momentum conditions and technicals. You have downward pressure from extreme valuation conditions, mm -hmm. and that's creating this compression. And I think we're going to see a tightening range for a while uh, in the market, and then uh, after that, giving way to a bigger correction. And I'll show you the timing for that uh, in just a little bit. Uh, and I think you're going to really get blown away by the VIX chart, or the three charts I'm going to show you in the VIX. Uh, but especially uh, one that is a revision from our big picture show that I think you're going to be very interested in. Now, keep mentioning that big picture uh, show, a special report, uh, which is only available to our members. That's free or premium members. So if you're watching this and are not a member and you want to watch that, uh, please do become a free member or a member for Snapshot Light, and you'll be able to uh, watch that show. Uh, for the week here, we've had uh, in the stock market a uh, small gain for the Dow and the Russell S&P 500 better because of the tech stocks that are in there, up 2%, NASDAQ up about 3% in that tech stock uh, revival. Bond market up about a point, the TNX 10-year yields came down about 10 basis points. That brings it down to 3.94%. You remember it got down to about 3.76% uh, about a week ago, and it's probably going to that uh, level again. Uh, gold market, we had that big Friday. Uh, it was up about $30 on the week. Uh, the oil market moving uh, up and down and getting gains for the week, as it has uh, now moved up based on uh, tensions in the Middle East and U.S. and the U.K. getting together and bombing those Houthi targets uh, that have been sending the, the missiles and, and rockets uh, over to uh, try to stop the commerce in the Red Sea. So the U.S. and U.K. is trying to take care of that, and that is causing tension and oil moving up. But it's still having a very tough time moving to the upside. And I think that you are um, going to see, if you get our charts, that there is resistance not too far on the upside in the $76 area, maybe a little bit higher, and probably going to be moving to the downside again. That's my opening commentary for the market. Um, we're going to move now into our trade planning with the Slim team. Uh, and uh, this is a, a great segment because we get to show you uh, and highlight each of our ways that we uh, uh, we apply the ASLIM cycle analysis. Uh, and of course, uh, all of us, our students of that style of analysis, uh, I started to learn the analysis back in 1975. A uh, year about a, about a, less than a year after I became a trader on the CBOE by uh, reading a book that was given to me uh, by my ex drummer in my rock band in high school, uh, Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing, uh, and uh, after I read that, my life had changed. Uh, that's uh, essentially the Bible of cycle analysis in the markets, written by J. M. Hurst, and uh, all the people that took our special last. Um, just a couple of months ago when we did the cycle analysis workshop special, all received that book as a, a gift from us. So it was, uh, I hope that you have read it and really enjoyed it, those people that did get that special from us. So I'm going to look at XLI, Katie's going to look at OIH, RV at Amazon, and Matt at FDX. And you can see what the uh, direction is uh, and also the outlook on each of these. And that's really important to um, give the outlook period that we're looking at because we're, you know, short term, we're talking about just a few weeks, maybe. Intermediate term, we may be looking out a month or several months. And longer term, 
you know, past that three to six month period. So uh, we have uh, two short term, I'm sorry, we have three short term and one intermediate term. So I'm going to start this out. I'm going to look at XLI as we dive into this analysis. You should be seeing the XLI charts right now. And on the left side, right over here, we're looking at the weekly chart of XLI. And on the right side here, we're looking at the daily chart of XLI. For those of you that are brand new to this and first time seeing cycle analysis, on the bottom are those cycle brackets, those half moons that is just a drawing tool that helps us understand the rhythmic motion or the heartbeat of the market. I'm going to blow up this weekly chart that you see here. And you can see the just outstanding rhythms that you see here in the market. On the bottom telling us if it were ideal, there'd be a trough here and then a trough here. And sometimes the troughs come a little bit on either side of the ideal. That's based on the principle of variance. And you can see that this cycle here, there resolved itself in a positive fashion as it had a higher bottom and higher trough, a uh, higher peak that says that the next rally is very likely to take out that level. And it did so. In this case, we had a break below the 78.6% that warned us that the next rally is not likely to get through the next 78.6%. But getting through it was about a 30% probability, and it did so as the industrial sector really started to get its footing. So you can see a positive cycle, a positive cycle that almost threatened the breakdown, and then a resumption. Note in here the reversal scout as it gave us positive momentum, negative momentum, and positive momentum that remains. Here's your extensions right over here, and you can see that we have a 127% here, 161.8% here. I have it projected to the lower one, but really it could be moving up into this level right over here to about, 100, to about $122 over the coming weeks. Now, why am I still bullish in here? Well, momentum is strong, as you can see right over there, based on our reversal scout. And then when I go over here to the daily chart, you can see the fantastic rhythmic motion. Again, this is the harmonic family that is the dominant and minor thirds. You can see there's a one-third, 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 and one-third about to make a low right over here. If this is about to make a low and momentum is positive, and the slim ribbon PO on the bottom is giving you these upward resumption signals, look how great those were. All of that says that this next rally right over here is likely to move to the upside. And there's the FIB extensions from the daily chart there. There's that $122 uh, number at the 61.8% FIB extension. So I'm just going to look at the side by side right now so you can see this is the bullish case on the weekly uh, right in here where it's still rising in this cycle, fairly early in this cycle. This uh, These are the positive uh, let me just grab that properly. These are the positive cycles right in here. As you see, ready to resume to the upside. Can you see why this is a high probability that the market, that this uh, ETF, XLI, the industrials, will be moving to the upside again very soon? That is using cycle analysis, momentum conditions, support resistance, Fibonacci extensions, and the key way that we look at the markets to raise your odds of success, raise our odds of success because we trade this and uh, that's what we want to do. We want to make you a better trader, an observer of the, of the market uh, messages that it sends to us. And of course, understanding this language, a language that we use very different from other um, uh, analysts out there. That is XLI and I'm going to turn this over to Katie. All right, let me know when you can see OIH. Got it. Right. 
All right, so I'm going to look at the analysis and some possible option strategies for this symbol. This is the Vanek Oil Services ETF, and you are looking at the weekly chart. On the bottom, we have these same cycle brackets. These are 22 bars in length, and as Slim mentioned, they are a drawing tool that helps us to visualize the money flows into and out of a symbol. Now you'll notice some vertical black dotted lines on the chart and those show us where the cycles formed their trough relative to the ideal cycles shown by the cycle brackets. So you'll notice that these are fairly consistent. Over here on the right we have blue vertical dashed lines and those show the period of time around the next ideal cycle trough when we would expect this current intermediate cycle in OIH to form a low and begin to move up again into the rising phase of the next cycle. So that period of time runs from February 26th to April 5th. So we do still have some time to go. Another thing to notice in here is cycle configuration, and that is defined by whether or not a cycle ends higher or lower than where it began. So this cycle the last one is positively configured, having ended higher. The current cycle that we're in is negatively configured because it is lower than where it began, which was right here, having broken below this key cycle low support. Now, because we do still have some time to go before we would expect this cycle to end, the probabilities favor that bounces in here would fail. So for that reason, we have created this minor resistance zone. And if OIH were able to get up into that area, we would watch for a failure. Finally, notice our proprietary momentum indicator, the reversal scout, that's this green and purple ribbon on the chart, green indicating positive momentum and purple indicating negative momentum. So it is currently showing negative momentum. So this is an overview on the weekly chart. Let's switch over to the daily chart and take a closer look. So here you'll see a series of negatively configured cycles ending, each ending lower than where they began. Uh, the current cycle two is now below where it started, having broken below that key cycle low support indicated by this red horizontal line. So on this chart two, we have created a minor resistance zone from which we would expect any rallies that might get up into this area to fail. Now the resistance zone is a declining one. It gets lower as OIH continues to move lower. Now this daily cycle is broken into minor half cycles and we are right at the time period when we might uh, reasonably expect OIH to attempt a move up into the rising phase of this second minor half cycle. So that as well as the dominant cycle are due to form a low out here in uh, early to mid February. Now in terms of momentum on the daily chart, we have two momentum indicators. First, the reversal scout again, um, and that is showing negative momentum. The second indicator is our proprietary slim ribbon that colors the candles red, green, or gray, depending on momentum conditions, and our candles are red, showing negative momentum. So our analysis shows a bearish bias in OIH as far as option strategies that we could employ to take advantage of this bias. My preference would be for a long premium strategy since the implied volatility in OIH at the present time is fairly low. So I would set some alerts to make myself aware of a bounce up into this zone and then depending on your account size, you could either buy a put or a uh, put debit spread. Um, you would wait for a signal on the lower time frame charts, let's say the two hour chart for a return to uh, negative momentum as a, an entry signal. So if the implied volatility rose enough that short premium strategies became attractive, then maybe a short call spread into this cycle low timing period, which happens to coincide with the February monthly expiration cycles uh, might be something to consider. So if we do get a move up into the resistance zone or a spike in implied volatility in OIH, I will publish an options trade idea for our members. That's great. Absolutely fantastic work. Thank you. Thanks. All right.
So let's go ahead and jump over to Amazon. I'm just going to look at a, a long short-term trade idea that we actually do have active for level three and four members. So let's uh, share the screen. Give it one minute to load. Okay, so you should see a weekly and daily chart for Amazon, weekly on the left, daily on the right as uh, as usual. So right here in Amazon, we just formed that key low right there, then got into that rising phase here. What's interesting about Amazon is we just formed this low right there and are now in a rising phase on that one as well. So we have both cycles turning back to the upside and pushing up, and Amazon has cleared these old highs. So all of this is, uh, is really quite bullish uh, here on the intermediate term in Amazon. On the upside, we have a zone here from 154.39 up to right around 168.58. 168.58 is a reasonable intermediate term level here to look for on the upside in, in Amazon, as long as we're holding above this rising 61.8 Fib here at 132.80. Jump over to the daily. Um, and you can see we have just formed a low. We had a, a low that was right around the end of the year. We have just ran to the upside and we're just looking for a small move on the downside to be bought. And then for this to turn right back up, you can see our our levels right here, 152.16 to 149.06. If it closes below on a daily basis, the 78.6 at 146.86, then this would be a losing trade idea. And on the upside, we're looking for a move up to these levels right here, 160.36 to 164.79 in Amazon. So we have a bullish outlook. And now I will hand this off to you, Matt. All right, excellent. Great work, team. Slim, Katie, RV. Our I'm going to show my screen. We're going to be looking at uh, FedEx. Let me know and you can see it. Just give me a thumbs up. Excellent. Okay. So I, I, as Slim mentioned, I'll be looking at FedEx, uh, intermediate outlook, and a uh, overall bearish bias. So I'll get into that in just a second. But I wanted to show here uh, where we typically get started in terms of looking uh, for ideas when it comes to uh, this segment that we do. So I go into the, the charts hub to start and the charts hub is available in level two and higher. And you have a uh, really easy access to our weekly and daily analysis for the complete focus list of symbols that the Ask Slim team covers. And that is uh, some of the uh, most liquid, best patterned uh, stocks, ETFs, and then futures markets. So you can see all those here on the left-hand side as I go down all the way through that, that list. It's an awesome list. Really don't need any other ones, but obviously there are plenty of other symbols out there. But how do you use this? You simply click on one of the symbols on the left and it defaults to our weekly chart. Click on the weekly chart image and you can see the, the, the work that we do in a static form. And then you can jump back and you can go to the daily chart, do the same thing. So that's what I do. I uh, walk myself through the various symbols. And then I stopped on FedEx and said, okay, this looks like we have a clear, a bearish bias in that intermediate term. So let's talk about uh, why that is. And I also want to you know, pull up this little checklist here regarding the core trade planning questions. So we, as Slim mentioned, Katie and RV, what do we start with is our outlook period. Very critical to understand what your outlook period is because that's where you'll be doing your, your work, setting up your levels, your reevaluations, and looking for then uh, signals to suggest that the, the trade is a go. Okay, so in a FedEx here, why a bearish overall directional bias? Well, if I start in the weekly, we can see that Essentially, we got into our, our peaking phase, and then we had a, a very large engulfing uh, candle here that formed. And then the week later, our reversal scout turned over, signaling a warning that that peak is in place. If the peak is in place, then as we get further out into the cycle, odds continue to, to diminish uh, the likelihood of a new peak to form. So therefore, we start to look for key resistance areas and also breakdown areas. So I'm gonna come back to this weekly chart here in just a moment. And I'm gonna talk about what do I see on the daily chart because this is really where you can zoom in and you get additional uh, market messages uh, signaling the, the bearish condition for FedEx. And most importantly, it would be that breakdown below this prior cycle low. So anytime we see that breakdown, it serves as a 
a confirmation. Obviously, there's no certainties, but it strongly increases the odds uh, that there is a high in place. And because of the timing, it also increased the odds that that uh, intermediate cycle peak was in place. So now we also have negative momentum on the daily with the reversal scout negative, the slim ribbon negative. So the and now the reason we're looking more at a uh, intermediate, let's say three to six week outlook is the fact that we are in the cycle timing window, which suggests that FedEx should be putting in a low and it likely already has. And if it breaks down very quickly, then that would suggest that we've already probably seen a, a left-hand translation, which is a negative occurrence. It simply means that we look for where the peak occurs. And if it occurs to the left-hand side, then that means there's a lot of time to go. If it occurs to the right-hand side, uh, then that means that you're looking for a more a shallow pullback due to the uh, diminished amount of time left. So in this case here, we have bearish momentum. We had a breakdown in the prior cycle. Or, or we've already had that breakdown here as we came into the new cycle low timing window. So, and we're into the, the uh, resistance areas of the slim ribbon. So in terms of short-term breakdown, if we saw a break below this 246.15, that would open up the door more quickly to this projection zone on the daily chart here. If not, if we, if we can get through this slim ribbon here, turn the reversal scalp positive, then it would be more of a typical scenario where uh, FedEx would push up near these uh, short-term resistance zones. And as Katie mentioned, then we would look for it to roll over as you get out into that peaking phase where it should fail. And then we would then make its move still probably into this projection zone. So I'm going to, and the revaluation level that we're looking at here is a daily close above 270, which would render this analysis need, needing to be revisited and likely suggesting that something else is changing more bullishly uh, in FedEx. So again, if we break that 246.15, we could see a swifter move to the downside into this daily projection zone, uh, either uh, here as we get into this early peaking phase or even as we get further out into that cycle. Coming back to the, the weekly, <clears throat> I have two uh, projections drawn here. Uh, one of those is around that cycle low timing with the daily, looking for to get close to that intermediate 78.6. And then if it is, uh, really weak, then we are likely to see it get close to that prior cycle low around that 230 level as we get out into that March, April timeframe. All right, that's my review of FDX. All right, great. Uh, go back to that daily chart for a second. Sure. Uh, the reason I want you to do that is because I have a, a video in our video library. Now, uh, we have just redone the uh, evergreen, uh, the, the way you can see the table of contents on the videos that are evergreen for levels two, three, and four. And in, in there, uh, you will find under the tools for text, uh, some uh, videos, one specifically on gap trading, there's one on, on types of gaps and what I say in there that I think is really important, and I want you to go watch those videos, is that when gaps when gaps occur in uh, with high volume, or usually around events on on stocks, ETFs that occur, stock market, but usually it's on the equities that it occurs. That usually starts something. And in this case, you can see very clearly it started a decline that was enormous. And the expectation would be that it would continue on the downside, that rallies would fail. And I think, Matt, you did a great job exhibiting that right here and how it really matches up with the cycle analysis also. So that break in FDX started something. And uh, you can uh, sometimes it starts something uh, on the upside. Sometimes it does so on the downside. Sometimes it's a breakaway gap. Uh, sometimes it's a gap reverse. I talk about the, all of those things in those videos. And I know so many people that are members of Ask Slim don't even realize how many things are in those video libraries. So I really encourage you to go in there. We have, I don't know, 600 or 700 videos in there, but the evergreen ones, the ones you really can learn from over and over again, there's probably 250 or more in that. So uh, just, uh, I really encourage you to go do that. Great work, Matt. Great work uh, from the whole team on that. Uh, so we're going to uh, jump now uh, into our next section.
Uh, I love this section, by the way, and uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, great use of it because uh, we can, you know, post this analysis on YouTube uh, and break it up and let people really get a sense for the type of analysis that we do. And then, of course, you can go back and you can look at what we did here because where you're going to get the kind of teaching that you just got here in this last 20 minutes or so from our team. So just uh, absolutely great work on that. All right, uh, we're going to get into Matt's review of our services. Matt, you want to take it back? Sure, excellent. Just share my screen. Yeah, as Slim mentioned, with that uh, trader library that we have, what we'll do for our, our, our current members is on both Discord, uh, we'll post the two videos that Slim's talking about regarding uh, gap trading. And then also we'll put up that link to the Evergreen videos in Discord and then we'll look to have Jason send out an email uh, to uh, all of our members as well with links links to those. Cause we know that not everyone's on discord, uh, but all of you should have can, uh, capability to access via email. Okay, share my screen. Can you see the screen? <clears throat> okay, as Slim mentioned, he has been a trader and analyst and now a coach. And that all started in the seventies. This is a fun little a picture here on the left, you can see Slim, where I've circled it in the CBOE oil trading pit 1982. And he mentioned that uh, JM Hurst book that our cycle analysis workshop members uh, received. That's sort of what kicked it off in terms of his technical analysis uh, journey. And uh, there's another picture here of the right of him doing uh, cycle analysis, utilizing data out of what was it slim the new york times that was the new york times every sunday or when the new york times came out and i only did weekly charts because i had to do it all by paper uh, <laughs> so you can see there i had about 38 different symbols that i did and all of that information taken out by hand from the new york times and entered by hand onto those charts and then i would study them you could see that big hundred year chart that's unfolded and yeah. uh, I still have that around. I mean, it's torn on the creases. And that's how I did my research uh, out, on incredible. paper. Incredible. Yeah. So that's what you're going to get with Ask Slim is you're going to get a world-class technical analysis team. Uh, we offer uh, multiple membership levels that start from uh, free opportunities all the way through a level four, which gives you full access to our proprietary indicators in our charts as we've been demonstrating. So those charts that you saw uh, the team uh, uh, show our trade planning process and trade idea from are, are the actual charts that you get to receive uh, if you're a level four member at Ask Slim. And that chart sub, as I showed, does represent those charts and can be accessed with level two, uh, starting at level two as well. So I just wanted to give a, a brief uh, update. Now, if you have interest in becoming an Ask Slim member, you can go to our our, our website at askslim.com. That's where we run our uh, technical analysis education uh, services from. And as I mentioned, there are uh, four premium membership levels. And then we also have a day trader, new day trader, separate premium membership. Usually uh, on average, about once a month, I'll, I'll host a webinar open house and run through the various membership levels, how there's, they're distinctly different benefits of each one in terms of functionality. Uh, but if you're just getting started with us, you you're not familiar with us, you can always become a free account member, or you can also sign up to get our uh, daily S&P analysis. And that will get, get you acclimated uh, with what we do. And, and then you can take it from there. Obviously, we, we really enjoy the relationship we have with our, our members. There's a lot of engagement that happens. And uh, it's an amazing opportunity to see a technical methodology, again, it's been developed over six decades. And then not only that, you get to be able to see it in, uh, in action uh, in, in terms of how do we transition from analysis to trade planning, to trade setup, and so on, really to educate you through that process. All right, Slim, back to you. Absolutely fantastic. The, the kind of things that we have going on to keep, you know, building, put huge breath into the yep. offerings that we have. And uh, I'm really excited about the um, uh, about the day trader. We just keep working and working on that. And I think yes. that people are that are day traders are just going to be astounded by all of the things that we're 
putting in there. I have another new idea this morning. I'm not going to say it. I'll tell you that one, Matt, uh, for, uh, for adding to that. So in two weeks, we're going to have a big upgrade in that. And I think that those people that are uh, day traders are really going to want Yeah, we've to already had a, a couple di uh, different expansions of the service. And there's a, there's a couple additional ones coming here in the next few weeks, which will just continue to really uh, round out what we offer. And, and, and again, give you the, the education, the knowledge uh, to, to put the probability in, in your favor of success when it comes to trading. Yeah, great. All right, so we're going to move into the Q&A. Um, there's not a lot for me in there, uh, uh, Katie and RV. You have a lot of uh, questions in there for you to answer. So I'm just going to take a couple really quickly. Um, I, I had, well, there's one comment in there. I did the analysis that in XLI, and the question is, well, what tickers do you like in XLI? So uh, I don't, you know, because we we do so much analytical work. Katie and Arby do the majority of the work in the um, in the ETFs and in the equities, and I do the futures, and then we look at each other's work. So I don't have a lot of analysis and. That's perfect. Perfect question for you to ask in those individual stocks in the XLI. But if I wanted to actually see what information I could get based on our algorithms, our proprietary indicators, I could go into our momentum tracker, which I have right over here. I think this is a good one. Now, this is an investor outlook that we're going to look at look at right now. Uh, and uh, I, I I could show you our MCM, but it doesn't have a lot of those stocks in there, but uh, our momentum tracker does. So this is a little uh, longer outlook when you ask me that question. And I'm just going to go into the mode where I can look at the different groups that you can see in here and take a look at XLI. And then I can get a sense for what the intermediate longer term indicators are showing plus the short-term indicators that we have right over here. So you do get a pretty good sense. So I'm in XLI and I, it's set on directional bias right over here. And you can see the directional bias setting right here. And now you can see which are the most negative or most positive in the group. And you ask me, what do I like? Well, I'm just going to let the algorithms tell me right in here. And you can see the list of stocks in the XLI that are very bullish. I'm going to keep scrolling slowly all the way through bullish, and that gives you some uh, good uh, picture of the ones that are positive in this group, in the XLI group. This is phenomenal. Look at all of them. They're positive. How do, you know, this is a great group, and I just told you I'm favorable in XLI when we look at all these bullish stocks right in here, but I can, once I get to there, the end of the bullish right there, I'll go back to the top, try not to blind you by going too fast in here. And then I can see this, look at 76% right over here in this pie chart, our positive versus 22% right there on the directional bias. If I wanted to look at you know, the long-term momentum condition, 71% long-term intermediate, we have 71% uh, intermediate term positive and short term, well, there's a correction going on. And you can see that 60% of them are neutral. And you can see in here where the short term, see where it says short term right over here. As I scroll down, you can see some of them are neutral on the short term. And that's why they're getting lower readings on the on the short term. This is an unbelievable uh, application that we have here uh, when you look at that. And it's uh, available as a level one product. So you know, $45 for three months and you can have this essentially. So this is just amazing. And you asked me that question. I didn't know a better way to answer it for you than to look at this. Uh, and, you know, uh, even I sometimes forget about all of the resources we have in here. So I want you to, you know, level, become at least a level one member and be able to access this kind of information. There are a th over a thousand symbols in here. You can see the groups as they are in here. Remember, XLE is one of the worst groups in right here. So if I grab the XLE, you can see in here, everything changes that directional bias ratio, only 39% are bullish. So this is a fairly neutral group when you look at the energies and you can go in here and look at all of them. So 
I, I wanted to show you that because I think that was really the way that I could answer your question uh, the best way about what tickers I like when I don't have all that cycle analysis done on all of them. So I uh, wanted to show you that. I think that's good. We had a question on oil. And then I'm going to turn this over to the rest of the team to do. I don't think there's any other commodity questions on there. Um, I think there was a question here on oil. Ah, it was somebody that was quoting Kramer, an anonymous attendee. Um, Jim Kramer analyst states that uh, Mid-January through March is a seasonally bullish time for oil. Do you agree with their analysis? Uh, and can it run up here through March? Um, let's uh, let, let me just switch uh, from this to the chart really quickly. I was on XLI. That's that XLI analysis. And I'm just going to go to forward slash CL. So your question is really, is there a seasonality in that period in the right around the end of the first quarter? Let's just look right over here and, you know, see uh, what our analysis has shown us. So if you look back in here at uh, 2023, the first quarter did have an upside move, but look at the cycle. That said upside move right over there. You had three of them turning up in that uh, period right there. So I guess you could say that was accurate. Let's go back to 2022, February, March. It got whacked in there. So now I think that when you start to look at seasonality, you really have to question the value of it without looking at many other things. I'm just going to look right over here. And our analysis shows that we're actually in a minor rising phase right there and ultimately what is a negatively configured cycle right in here this dominant cycle is pushing down we have a lot of weakness due here in through this march period and then likely to turn up again over here into april may get some kind of a rally that's the area where i think there's a rebound coming in there and right now we're in this period that is really looking kind of risky you can see right here that what's going on is that we're putting in some kind of a flag right here and once that bear flag is over with then it comes down a little bit of a cycle lesson right over here because cycle analysis does say to us that um the a psych that the patterns are formed by the formations of the cycle structures so if you have a dominant cycle that is already broken down and pushing down you have a big energy pushing to the downside right here while you have another energy pushing to the upside the upside energy is weaker because it's a uh, a, a cycle of a, of smaller duration smaller period so it can't fight against this downward energy that's in here and it makes a flag eventually the smaller energies release and it, they both come down together. And that's why they say you come out of the flag the same direction that you go in the flag. This is a, there's a, one of our uh, uh, cycle analysis modules teaches about this and how the uh, cycles do form. So I don't necessarily believe that, that uh, there's a lot of seasonality that we could look at that makes it favorable. In this case, we can see a decline that's due in through sometime in March. And then April, May looks better. And I would say that's based on the market energies versus cyclicality. That's what I uh, have on that. And now I'm going to turn this over to uh, Katie and Arvi. You want to take it away? I will take the screen and let me know when you can see Caterpillar. Got it. We're good. Okay, so I'm going to cover this one first. Someone had asked about it, and since we were talking about XLI, this is one of the members of that group. So uh, we have um, some bullishly configured cycles, positively configured. This one ended higher than where it began, although it did retrace pretty deeply. Uh, now we're getting up to the prior cycle peak resistance, and we've just gotten through there and pulling back from that area a little bit. Uh, this um, cycle so far is 
very positively configured. We are getting about to the middle of the cycle. We'd consider that the peaking phase. Um, we are um, pulling back, as I said, but we do have this projected to make it up to the top of this target zone that is right around 3 313. Um, so that is the longer term look. We do have a cycle timing window that is due in the middle of April to middle of May timeframe. We have positive momentum in here with our reversal scout. If we go over to the daily chart, we have um, dominant cycles, 46 bars. That's relatively long. Those are broken into minor half cycles. So you can see that we are in the daily cycle timing window right now. We believe our low to have formed right here, getting down into the minor supports that are um, shown by these green horizontal lines. So I have marked uh, the what we believe to be the cycle low with this red horizontal line. And we do have negative momentum with the reversal scout, still a positive slim ribbon. We are getting um, some bearish candles this week. So I'd like to see um, I'd like to see that turn up and be able to get through that prior cycle peak. If we break below this um, this level here at 283.32, then we would have to uh, think that our intermediate term as well as short term high is in. But for now, um, this is still looking positive. Now I'm going to go over to JP Morgan. Someone had asked about that. So uh, again, kind of a similar situation. We had a nice strong move up off of that October low, and we have a prior cycle peak over here that we are testing and pulling back from. And we are still relatively early in the rising phase of this cycle. This is a 32 bar cycle. This green one is the XLF, which is the uh, financial ETF. So we are projecting up to uh, 181-ish area. And um, we will see if it can get up there. We don't have a, a cycle low due until basically July. If we switch over to the daily chart, we just finished up a cycle, it was not a very clear low in here, just a very swamp cycle. Uh, we believe this to be the low and that was at 165.64. So that is a level that we do need to watch. We have a, you know, a very bearish candle forming today and we just had earnings. So it'll be interesting to see um, how this goes. We have a negative reversal scout, slim ribbon is still green. So if we can get a momentum continuation to the upside signal down here on the slim ribbon PO, then um, I would say that that could possibly be a bullish indicator um, to move up to that uh, cycle peak at 176, up here to 181 would be the target. Let's check on Tesla. Tesla has a very large dominant 45 bar cycle broken into minor thirds. This is a 15 bar cycle and we are getting into that a minor cycle trough. We do have earnings coming up on January 24th. Momentum has turned negative in here and we are retracing quite deeply. So we do need to um, take a look, a closer look on the daily chart and I'll show you that in just a moment. But um, you know, this is, it, kind of an expectation going into this minor cycle trough. We just don't want it to retrace too deeply. We do have a dominant cycle low that's at 194. So we need to watch that level. Um, it is concerning that the momentum has turned negative. And if you look over here on the daily chart, we have broken below this um, key cycle low support at 228.20. So that would suggest that this daily cycle has seen its high and we would expect any rallies to fail. So we could take a resistance zone with a Fibonacci retracement tool from that high to that low. And if we were able to get up above, let's say 236 to 247 and a half, that might be a good shorting opportunity into the end of this cycle, which would be the beginning of February. Now we do have earnings, so you need to watch out for that. Anything can happen on earnings. Momentum is negative in here. We have a negative reversal scout, negative slim ribbon. We are at that point in the cycle when we would expect uh, maybe a move up back up 
into the uh, second minor half cycle. But as I said, if it were to get into this zone, then that would be a good shorting opportunity into that minor cycle trough back here on the weekly chart. One more that came in was KWeb. This is um, not updated, but it's still looking pretty good. It's the China Internet ETF. We made a dominant cycle low back here, and that uh, key level is 24.34. So we are trading just above that and coming into this time period at the end of the month, beginning of February, when we would expect this cycle to make a low and then move back up into the rising phase of the next cycle. We do have negative momentum on the weekly chart. And here are the daily cycles. You can see they are very consistent, 52 bars, so that's a large cycle. And we probably formed our uh, daily cycle low right here and moving back up. This is negatively configured, so again, we could take a, re a resistance and if we were to get up into 26.45 to 27 and a half area, that might be a good shorting opportunity. Momentum is negative in here. And I'll turn it over to RV. All right, thanks so much, Katie. Great job. Let's uh, first start out with Microsoft. That was the first question we got, and I'll share my screen in one minute. So Microsoft, uh, we have been overall very positive on. Um, and we'll pull up the intermediate term time frame. We had this drawn in ahead of time. Basically, we were looking for this to just trade sideways for a little while until this low formed right there. And then for this to pop back to the upside, that's exactly what it's doing right now. So the overall bias on the intermediate term is clearly still pointed up. Uh, we have a zone here that has a high of right around the 400 area. That's very reasonable in MSFT. So still a firm upward bias uh, is in place there with the next dominant trough that's due right around that April time period uh, of 2024. Shift over to the daily. You can see that this just traded sideways uh, into this low, but then just blasted off off of this low. You can see that there was a low due right around year end, it, really just absolutely perfect, and then just ripped to the upside. So right now, the overall bias is positive. We're looking for still higher. We have, as I said, a level right around 400. And we do have earnings. Um, it looks like right on 123 in the aftermarket. So we have to keep our eyes on that, as we say. And it is really important to emphasize anything can happen on, on earnings. If this were to somehow lose this low at 366 half, that would be a daily cycle breakdown and would shift the bias. Jump over to the GDX. Pull up the intermediate term. So GDX uh, is acting okay. But you can see we are holding inside of this old high and that old low. So this is right now neutral. Uh, and as you can see, we are just, you know, really going back and forth, back and forth. We are holding this zone on the downside 2880 to 2806. If we were to lose the 786 to 2697, that would be bearish and would raise the odds that, that you've seen a high here on that longer cycle. On the upside, we're looking for a move back towards these old highs back here, right around the $32 level. And, and that also coincides with the 61.8 Fib. On the daily time frame, there is a daily low that is due right around now. Uh, and we are looking for this to get a pop as it's trying to do here. So see if it can put in this higher low and then curl back to the upside like that and move up towards the 61.8 at 3090. And then there's a 78.6 right there at 3153. So overall acting okay. Uh, in GDX. Shift over now to Baba and Baidu. Both of these names are just super weak. Let's uh, first sh uh, show you Baidu. So Baidu uh, is not acting well right here. You can see that there was a low due, just basically trading sideways. This is now a lower cycle low versus the old low, lower high versus the old high. So the highest odds are going into this next trough which is due right around June, we would look for a lower low versus this old cycle low at 103.32. That is really what the highest odds are and that it would fail in this zone from 124 to right around 136.5. Uh, so those are our levels here on the upside and downside on the intermediate term in Baidu and likely forming a, a peak shortly. Uh, if we shift over here, you can see that this is also really very, very weak. We have a low that is due right around earnings. Uh, this low is due 214 to 228 here in Baidu, you can see it is failing versus the 61.8 Fib at right around 119.69, uh, but really just out of play as it is 
it as it is not in any kind of clear trend right now. Watch for that to change. If we can clear this old low at 109.53, that would open the door to this old low back here at 103.37 going out into the end of February. Shift over to BABA. BABA also weak. You can see not giving you any kind of sizable move higher. Also, you can see only forming lower cycle lows versus the old low. So this is bearish on the intermediate term. We were looking for it to try to get to the base of this zone at 82.30. It couldn't. This high was only at 77.80. And if it loses this low here at 70.08, uh, this would still be negative and would actually raise the odds that we've seen a very early peak. And this would be really quite bearish. Okay, so this is really not a good picture. Jump over to the daily. Uh, you can see what happened here. It tried to put in that higher low here, couldn't, and then has now... Have just trading right around that 78.6 at 71.80. This low is also due 214 to 228 in line with Baidu. And that is also when that next earnings date comes. So absent of that, you can see this is just mired in a downtrend as it has been for many, many months and only seeing bear signals here on the PO throughout this entire way down. You can see how beautiful they have been for many, many months uh, uh, here in the PO. So just want to always focus on, on what the bias is. The bias on the short term is still pointed down. Shift over to the SMH. SMH uh, is still acting fine and uh, did have a solid week. You can see we have formed our low there. This is looking like a higher low flag that is poised to give another shot back to the upside towards this zone here from right around 179 to 190. Our next Trough is due 318 to 513. Jump over to the daily chart. Again, acting fine. Formed its low right here. We're looking for just a small flag versus this zone here, 170.65 to 168 versus the 78.6 at 166.26. A loss of 166.26 would be a bearish sign on the short term. And on the upside, we're looking for a move towards this blue zone here, 179.36 to 184.0 five in the smh okay so that's that and uh unh i don't have anything updated uh there so i apologize and slim i'm going to hand this off to you all right that's great i'm just going to quickly answer a couple more questions uh first of all mr seiko said happy new year slim great overview on the uh, video for the big picture for 2024 Thank you for that. Nobody would really realize uh, that uh, the number of hours that is put into that kind of a video, which was a, a, a basically a 90 minute video covering five major markets, uh, those sectors, and it was about 20 hours work between the research and production. So it's a monumental uh, thing to do. And uh, oh, I love getting these comments about uh, how much they enjoyed it because it's really important uh, to me. Um, the uh, next question is, um, there's a question here about our level four videos and how that relates to the, the cycle analysis training and is everything already in those videos? The answer is no. I mean, there is a basic, uh, there, there's video in there on basic cycle analysis, which gives a very basic look at it, which you can also see for free under our workshop uh, tab uh, on the front page. The uh, there's 24 modules in here, and I really take a detailed step by step uh, graduated approach to teaching the analysis. And the workshop videos are just very, very de different and very separate uh, from uh, what you get in uh, the uh, taking the workshop. I really encourage you to do so. It's relative to the big picture of being in the trading world. It's really not a very big investment. So uh, please do go for it. And last question is. Um, a Parag uh, Lal says, wow, I've been a level four member and I don't feel like I'm using most of the benefits what you guys provide. That's after I looked at the um, uh, XLI components. Uh, and uh, he said, wow, that is incredible. Thank you. And yeah, it's true. You know, I know that a lot of our members don't even realize the depth of what we have in there. And uh, you can always write to the team and say you want uh, a walkthrough, you want some help with that based on your level. And of course, we're always glad to help you with that. So uh, please do uh, consider uh, that uh, there is a ton in there. And just stepping up one level gives you a, a huge increase in the amount of content and learning that you can do. So please do consider upgrading too. All right. 
You've been waiting for it. One hour to get to this point. This is a little bit longer show than we normally do. Uh, and uh, I can see the huge amount of people that are with us uh, have stuck with us at this point. So uh, we're look at, looking at the uh, stock market right now. Uh, just uh, do look at, read this slide because it tells you about our approach to the market and what that means for you. And always the key important thing is that you take trade ownership of uh, your own trades. All right. So we're going to look at multiple time frame analysis and projections in the SPX. Slim, yep. Slim we just have to uh, see yeah, your, show your charts. Yeah, we don't see anything right now. Wow. Disappeared. All good. Yep. Okay. Somehow I thought I clicked PowerPoint on that. Slide. So now we're going to, you didn't see that. You didn't see that last screen of that important slide then. So let's just go back there for one second. This is the slide that's important for you to read before uh, engaging in our and the analysis of things that we show. So always important to see that. Now we are going to get uh, to the stock market analysis. And we're going to take a look at the S&P 500. We'll look at the VIX. Uh, and we're also going to uh, look at the market condition monitor. Right? This is the approach we're going to take. Those of you that are interested in seeing the NASDAQ and the um, the Russell, I'm not going to do that analysis today. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, if you, of course, become a member, uh, uh, you can get all of those analysis. Uh, all of our, ma our premium member levels get get some of those or all of those, uh, depending on what level you are. And uh, the, our our chart hub, which is level two, is just mind boggling how good that is for uh, to be able to see all the analysis. Uh, sorry. So now we're going to uh, get to the chart. So let's look here at the S and P five hundred. First thing we're going to look at here is that we're on the side by side and we're looking at the dominant and minor cycles here on the weekly and we're looking at the same thing on the daily. The weekly clearly has been rising in this strong upward phase momentum has been strong you can see the reversal scout the reversal scout said to you that the cycle bottom was in over here at 4230 4240 something like that and then rallied 550 points after that so the reversal scout kept you on the uh, long side based on this this dominant cycle this this dominant cycle here is really the determining factor uh, when you do all of the analysis. And how does that resolve itself? Well, it resolves itself in these positive cycles right over here. So now we have a timing issue because we were looking at a low to come somewhere right here in between these two timing lines right there, which said to us that was the highest probability. Year end, things tend to get, get a little funky because of tax um, taxes, because of reallocations. And I've said that a number of times this last couple of weeks. You don't always know what's going to happen, and there could be some shifting. Well, here, when I look over to the daily chart, we actually had some shifting, as you can see. So this grayed out uh, ghosted cycle, as we call it, was what I was looking for, which called for this correction to continue here into somewhere around the middle of January. And of course, I get emails and comments that said, Slim, you said the market was going to go down until the middle of January. Well, <laughs> The important thing is to understand is that this is money flows. This is uh, these things shift around, and you can see how just reducing the cycle period minimally just moves it to where instead of being with this being the cycle length, this is now the cycle length. These are all shortened by the minimal amount. And then it really gives you a good handle. And when you look back, you can see it barely changes anything at all. So there was a tiny little energetic shift in here. And this is clearly what happens. As I said earlier in the show, Arvi looked at the different sectors and he saw the bottoms forming in those sectors in the short term. And that keyed me to look at the higher probability that this was occurring. 
and we saw this bottom form. What's really interesting is that in this corrective period, the slim ribbon stayed positive the whole time. You can see the slim ribbon often is a source of support, as you can see right in here. In this rally, it was a source of support. And it's often a resistance when it bounces back up. Sometimes it gets up a little through it and then comes back down. And look at the slim ribbon PO. This tells you when momentum is likely to resume to the upside. No lying here because all of this was really telling you that it was turning up. And uh, then when uh, we got a sense that the, uh, that the different groups were turning up already, we knew that it was time to make this adjustment. What we're looking for in here is our upside target zone. This is the 78.6% FIB extension and the 100% FIB extension. And the 100% weekly extension is at the same place here. So 48.90 approximately is a reasonable upside projection in here. The middle darker arrowed uh, cycle track, as you see there, we're kind of forming two different channels. And it's right now on the bottom of the channels, just getting back up to that level, um, is uh, is telling us that, you know, if it doesn't want to get that high, it installs, that's 48.45. So this is 48.90. This is 48.45 right there. Here is the all-time high at 48.18, which it still hasn't gotten back up to yet, getting up to as high as 48.02 today. So th these are the important numbers. The all-time high, 48.18, 48.45, a reasonable upside expectation, 48.90, a potential upside expectation. If this rolls over to the downside and takes out the cycle low right over here, that would be a breakdown. 46.82.11 is that key number. Now, there's a 78.6% in here. I don't have it yet because this is still moving up. I'll put it in there for our members next week, which would be a warning level. But this is an absolute problem level under 46.82.11. That would say that this dominant cycle here had turned down and it would have a long time to correct. You can see that this points to middle of March when that next dominant cycle correction comes in and syncs up with the minor one, same date, March 15th, middle of March. If I go back over here and I show you this cycle on the weekly where middle of March comes, that is essentially right here, timing-wise, middle of March. That says that there is another whole short-term cycle period in there to come, and this period of risk comes after the rally following that middle March low. So we're looking for late March through early May as this next yellow zone, this next period of risk. That means that all of this, in the beginning of the show, I talked about the compression the upside momentum fighting the resistances here in high valuations for the stock market, and actually can see us chopping around up in this area right over here. And then sometime late March through potentially April and early May, a very large downside could occur. Even if it only hits the bottom of this upward channel, which is a pretty optimistic view, that would still take you down to 4,400, which would be maybe an 8%, 9% decline right there. So this is the risky period right over here, late March through potentially late April or early May, that next period of risk, which you see right over here and over here. In the meantime, we're looking for the stock market to continue uh, moving to the upside, make up to those, get up to those suggested levels, and uh, then it will be a... Uh, question about when we get into that March period. I want you to just take a look at this chart right over here. Uh, our level four members get this, and Matt posts variations of this uh, in his reports. And uh, this is looking at daily momentum right over here. And we had had some warnings right over here. Now, the little, the orange, uh, the orange uh, little dots went away because the there's a component in here that is based on volatility. And sometimes when it's just barely getting to it, the dots come and go. You see in here when it made the bottom, the orange dots stayed. This was not enough 
uh, of a uh, move above the de the deviations and or standard deviations to get it to hold in there. But we did get warnings of peaks. And then it did eventually come down 113 points or so on the downside. But you could see momentum here rock solid when you look at that in the S&P 500. So uh, this is just another view of our indicators in here. And uh, when this is green, as you can see right over here, it is a P3. And that tells you positive. It's very likely to be moving on the upside. When it's down here at P1 or into the P2s, you're likely going to be moving to the downside. So uh, another great uh, uh, one of our um, ways that we look at markets uh, for the momentum conditions. So now, before I wrap this up, I said I would look at VIX, and I think the VIX analysis is very important and uh, because we can get some good timing off of the VIX. Here are the VIX cycles right in here. And like I said, we're likely to continue rising here in the stock market, getting up to that S&P 4845, 4890 area. And you can see here that this cycle, and you can see the blue cycle right in here, uh, that is telling you that there's probably another couple of weeks of rally right over here before this begins to move up and implied volatilities begin to jump. Right over here, you could see the applied volatilities made their low right at that timing, and they're already moving up. This looks like it's configuring in a positive way. In other words, it really looks like implied volatilities have seen their worst. And looking at this, it says that somewhere out here in February, there's likely to be another move in the in the stock market to the downside. But the real upside move in the implied volatilities don't come out over here until mid-March. You can see how that lines up with what I just showed you in the stock market, where there's a likely period of risk. And I labeled that right over here, stock market period of risk, out in March, April, that's the time frame you got to look out for a big downside move. I'd say it's 8 to 15% downside move during that time period. Now, we're going to go to one more really important chart that nobody has ever published before, and that is looking at the monthly VIX. This is looking at the monthly VIX, VIX all the way back to 87 and what I have in here is showing you, and this is, uh, I built on what I showed in the uh, big picture analysis, the year end show, that special report, showing you how these pops and implied volatilities come and how they relate to events or to market conditions. And you can see right where we are right here, and that is the likelihood that there is a very important trough in implied volatilities coming. So what happens when you get to when both of them are coming down to these lows? Well, you get the crash of 87, which occurred right over here. And in that first area right over here, implied volatilities went up to, well, 152. Well, we know that's not likely to happen. I mean, that's just crazy. By the way, yes, I traded the crash of 87. It was chaos. Here you could see the debt crisis in 1994 uh, and where implied volatilities had a, just a modest pop up to about 29 early in this period right over here. Here you could see this period of the bear market of 2000 to 2002 and the waves of higher implied volatility, 35, 35 uh, here up to 48 in this early period. Now, this is a couple of years this is a couple of years right over here. This right over here, well, kind of held uh, down near the bottoms over there until the bear market of 2008 and nine when implied volatilities got as high as 90. That first pop over there was up to about 37. So again, we are really in the same spots in each of those where the bottoms or the troughs are coming right in here and right in here. And right in here, each of those market events, this was long-term capital management right there. I remember that very clearly. Uh, right here was the, the 2000, 2001, where that bottom came right there. Uh, here, of course, is the bear market from 2008, where that came. This is the debt ceiling crisis, the U.S. debt downgrade in 2011. This is the Greek debt crisis. So this happened at the mid-cycle point right over here. Look at this. This is where the pandemic came in right there. 
and you can see that this is where the uh, you had that move up to 84 at that point. So where are we now? We're making this bottom right over here in implied volatilities. There is an event out there in these next couple of years. I just showed you that March, April is likely to come down in the stock market. I don't even think it's that's the event. I think it's coming out there further than that. But we could get into a period where volatility jumps very, very significantly in there. You could see all of those periods where these higher volatility periods came, and we're getting into one of those right now. I wanted to share that with you because I thought how important that was to know that, especially if you're a longer-term investor, you know, the the Fed, uh, uh, they're talking about Fed cutting rates. They're talking about the, um, you know, interest rates coming down, seven rate cuts this year, everything getting better, inflation coming down to 1.8% year over year. Everything is just absolutely great, right? Well, these charts are telling you there's chaos out there, and it's just a moment in time when things look better. So I just wanted to show you that, and that has absolutely nothing to do with what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week, because as I showed you, the stock market is still in a bullish condition. So don't look at that VIX analysis that I just gave you and say, it's time to go short. It's time to listen to what the charts tell you, and they will tell you when there's a high probability that we're going to get into a more chaotic period. Right now, it's stable, moving up, energies are up, and that's what we're looking at. And that is my analysis in the stock market for right now. If you didn't love that, I don't know what planet you're from. That's looking at everything I had to give you. I want to remind you that uh, you can go to the front of our website and get our stock market analysis for free every day by becoming a Snapshot member. And then we'll let you see this uh, special report that I keep bragging about. And of course, everybody else who writes to me does the same that's it. We did it. This is an hour and 20 minute show. Team, say something. Have a great, great weekend, everybody. Yeah, that was fantastic. A lot of fun. Yeah. Right. Some great job, information. Everybody. Great job, Slim. Great job, RV. Great job, Katie. Great job, team. Team, I'm really proud of you. See you in a couple of weeks. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.